Hello, everybody. I'm Alex Pashov from Crystal Touch Bell's Palsy Clinic in Rotterdam, the Netherlands. In today's recording, we are going to discuss a question which we quite often hear from our patients and also on our uh, social network sources. And the question is, why facial exercises are not very effective against synkinesis? It's a very, very interesting and extremely important question. Why? Because quite often the main uh, stream opinions about that are different from what we think about the issue. But let's go slowly by slowly into details. First a statement. Synkinesis, in our opinion, are not caused by your facial muscles nor by your facial nerve. The, in uh, our opinion, the facial exercises which are quite often recommended or almost every time is used for rehabilitation of patients after facial palsy are uh, re uh, reminding me rehabilitation measures that are very correctly applied for, to the patients after stroke. When stroke happens, part of the brain becomes damaged, so that part of the brain cannot manage the body movements anymore because it just simply does not exist anymore. So it makes all sense to try to reproduce certain movements so that the uh, uninjured, intact parts of the brain using neuroplasticity would take over the functions, or at least partly, from the injured by the stroke areas of our brain or for that matter of motor cortex. In the case of facial paralysis, neither the brain nor the muscles have not sustained any injuries. The only thing which has been compromised is the wire connecting them. So the mimetic patterns in our brain remain intact. The muscles are also remain intact. So that is the reason, in our opinion, why doing facial exercises is not very efficient for reduction of synchronicities. Let's go a little bit deeper into this issue. As you probably have noticed many times, maybe didn't uh, realize it really, but at any given moment, our face uh, resembles a screen on which two beamers are projecting their pictures. Not one, two. First one is the mimetic picture or the structured mimetic signals, which are guided only by the intensity and color of the experienced emotions. The source of that spectrum of signals is our limbic system or the factory of emotions. That's one picture. The second picture is dictated by our voluntary efforts to produce facial expressions. For example, when somebody wants to make a smile, fake. Surprise, fake. Why? because our voluntary part that can allow us to move the face in a certain way is not developed by evolution to reflect our emotional state, our emotional condition. Limbic system is a product of evolution and it is our communication tool. You, me, anyone in other part of the world or the continent, when we are happy, we smile. When we are unhappy, we frown. That is the reason. And the second part, which is voluntary component, is much rough, more, much more rough, much coarser, so to say, when it, uh, it goes about making facial expression. That's why in most cases, it's very easy to notice when some facial expression in a person who is, not, who is not specifically trained to fake the emotions, like actors, politicians, and so on, uh, it is very easy to detect. So to give you a simple example, that at any given moment, we have two sources of our facial expressions, a mother and a child. Let's imagine. A mother, of course, who loves her child dearly, sees her child doing something very funny, but it's not allowed. Internally, the mother would smile, laugh and everything, but she wants to show that she is very strict and she is very unhappy. So she said, like, Johnny, what are you? And she cannot help smiling. That's the very clear demonstration of two sources of our facial expressions. And the one which is stronger is more visible. Now, as uh, we already discussed in several uh, recordings uh, previously, 
whenever uh, the brain is uh, cannot move the facial muscles properly due, due to facial palsy, it starts to, to amplify, to uh, send stronger signals towards the facial muscles, which is, in fact, a mimetic amplifier, and it is, has a source in the motor cortex, which is voluntary center of our mimetic movements. That is why those uh, signals, which are much more coarse, but very intense, they are overlapping the signals that are produced by the limbic system. And of course, they are much more visible with all those imbalances that we experience when we are on a further stage of recovery after facial palsy, when the synchronesis, tightness of facial muscles and everything comes to the scene, and we, of course, suffer from it. That is the reason why the doing voluntary facial movements or facial exercises we consider not efficient for reduction of synchronesis for a simple reason. These movements, these exercises you do using which center? Voluntary. It has nothing to do with your experienced emotions, so it is uh, originating in the motor cortex, which is voluntary uh, center of mimetic movements, which is of course, capable of moving uh, our face, but not exactly as finely tuned as it is possible by the limbic system. That is the reason why at least the doing facial exercise, in our opinion, is, has, brings no results, or in some cases, it can even increase the intensity of synchronesis because the brain is trying too hard to move your face, whereas it is unnecessary. And when it's trying too hard, it inevitably engages other muscles, which absolutely have nothing to do with intended facial expression. And of course, you have all sorts of imbalances in your facial movements. To really reduce uh, synchronesis, you don't need to work on your muscles. You need to disengage the mimetic amplifier. And that can be achieved on working on your brain or with your brain, your emotions, your focused facial relaxation, and on your real perception of yourself. In our rehabilitation method, we have developed a special way to work on that. It takes a minimum of several months of daily work and constant guidance to achieve lasting improvements. The reason is simple. You need to change the habit, or in this specific case, to remind the brain of its good old habit of moving your face without effort. We work with each and every patient individually based on his or her experience, history of uh, this uh, functional disorder, emotional structure, and so on and so on. So that is uh, what I wanted to share with you today. And if you want to make the next step in the direction of your recovery, please do not hesitate to contact us via the website or register for the online video consultation. Thank you.